what is going on guys red here this is going to be episode two of zero to gold where we take a fresh level one wizard and try to build a full gold set as fast as possible in the first episode we managed to hit level 13 and build a humble wizard set that can definitely do some damage and start pvping comfortably we also obtained various treasures that we will be selling on the marketplace once we hit level 15 one of the goals of this episode and another goal is to obtain our very first piece of golden gear the golden cloak hope you guys enjoyed this episode let's get started Alrighty, and we load in here into the goblin caves immediately start breaking some boxes and we get some purple rawhides right off the bat which are very nice because they give four knowledge instead of the two knowledge that we had they also give one vigor which is two health i believe on wizard any health rolls on any piece of gear is really good that's going to bump us up to 44 knowledge as well. But yeah, in this gear, I'm feeling pretty confident that we can now start PvPing for cash, which is going to be the main way we make it to obtain all of our gold gear. And from that barrel right there, we get some crazy shoes. 11 move speed, 3 max health, 3 magic power, lace turn shoe. This shoe is actually pretty underrated. It's pretty much better than Lightfoot's at this point because they do have base agility, which is nice. And so we will be equipping those. We're very close to level 15, which is going to allow us to get that fourth perk, which is going to be Mana Surge, giving us 10% magic damage. I ended up buying the white magic staff over the green crystal sword, because with Ignite, it is better for clearing mobs. And now that Ignite has 10 charges, I don't even mind clearing mobs anymore. It used to be really bad with just 5 charges. And so that was a really good buff for Wizard PvE. But yeah, just gonna go around here, open every single chest, looking for upgrades, sellables, so that we can get started on saving that cash for that Golden Cloak. Something I also want to add about the magic staff is that it does two hit every breakable in the game. We get a nice campfire there, which is super helpful. Like that box right there only took two hits. The wooden barrier takes two hits and barrels take two hits with the staff. And the crystal sword takes four. So it is a little more efficient when you are trying to break boxes and barrels, which is why I also prefer the staff. Always going to be keeping those blue frannies. I believe the set is worth 150 gold. We also get a spell book here with four magical power and some max health. So I compare the damage and the book actually gives us more damage. Although it doesn't have the 5% magic pen. So this was a really hard decision. I believe I settled on this book because I just prioritized the two max health over the 5% magic pen. And then we could just sell this later anyways. Don't be afraid to burn some magic missiles on range mobs, especially the ranged goblin like this. If you take one hit, it can be detrimental. And especially if you get pushed and you need to heal all that HP back. Just use the magic missile. You, you basically always want to keep about two charges in case you need to do PvP with it. And you should be good. We also have a ton of campfires, so I shouldn't really be hoarding the missile count.
Now we come to the elevator room, which is very common for PvP on this map, and I do notice an open door across the hallway. I light orb in case there are any rogues close. And I spot a ranger holding his bow out down the room. I sip up the purple protection potion to eat some damage, invis to create some space, and the fight will commence here. Unfortunately, we do end up going down to a hidden ranger trap under the goblin that I did not see. I didn't want to spoil anything for you guys, but there is the first death of the series. I did make sure there were no traps, but unfortunately, I did not account for the mop trap, which is a pretty common ranger tactic. All I had to do was jump over it. Here it is under the goblin's leg. Had I made this jump over the goblin, we probably would have been able to zap duel the ranger and win. Unfortunately, we couldn't really do anything here because we did have mobs behind us hitting us as well. And we were probably just dead regardless. If the mobs weren't behind me here, I would have tried to zap him, but it was the end for us. What makes this even funnier is that I died to a good buddy and YouTube content creator of mine, Foxman Slays, who I played a bunch with. So I was actually able to get the perspective of what it looked like for him. Uh, there's no audio because he was literally just vibing to music. But yeah, there is me, and we go down. GG's. Now, that might have looked like a big setback, but what we have in our stash here is going to be able to buy us an insane kit. So I know if we just hit level 15, we can spend all this gold, and we will be unstoppable. A death is bound to happen, especially on Wizard, such a squishy class. So my plan forward from here was go back to the Bonk build for a game, and we ended up building this set which is just vendor gear plus the ring and amulet I had in my stash. After that game, we did hit level 14, by the way, so we're just one level away now from 15. With just the white magic staff and merchant commons, even after the staff mastery perk, we are still hitting 74 total damage with the ignite staff. And back in the dungeons for another run. Off the very first corpse here, we actually manage to grab a quick upgrade, heavy boots for strength, is really good for the bonk build and then we get one knowledge on it as well i spawned really close to the elevator with the centipede room and i decided to try to take out both of them here because you can get some insane jewelry which you can then sell for a lot so to kill them i just lure it out here so we don't get ganked from above or aggro any goblins and i do get hit there but for this mob you kind of just circle it and you'll never get hit. Just go in and out for a couple hits. Usually you get one. And if it ever does that spit attack, you look down and crouch. Just end up speeding the kill a little bit here. Because it does this annoying thing where it'll walk away and leave the poison trail on the ground. But eventually we do end up killing it. It is actually pretty fast with the magic staff. We managed to grab an agility pendant and a very nice ox pendant with all attributes. Unfortunately, didn't roll any damage, but I end up equipping it over the uh, three true damage amulet just because it has some magic power as well. So it's actually pretty nice for our build. And now I have to wait out these poison trails, which are very annoying. Finally, they go away. And now it's time to make my way over to the other centipede to try to obtain some more jewelry. This is also going to give us a ton of XP since they are sub bosses, which should ensure we get level 15 this run. Pick up some leather chassis with two resourcefulness that are blue, their foreknowledge base, which is really nice. This goblin goes X Games mode by just dodging with the walk back. This has to be the most annoying mob in the game just because they walk away from your attacks, unlike the other AI who usually just W towards you. You gotta be careful. Sometimes they'll turn around and just 180 swing at you. 
Second centipede in sight after we grab this chest. Got a shadow mask that'll probably sell and some more Francesca axes. I do end up luring the centipede again. A little bit back here. I don't hear anyone above me, so it should be a pretty safe kill. Again, I'll just speed it up because you guys get the idea with the centipede. This one we actually kind of melted. Unfortunately, the loot was pretty bad. We get a one true magic damage amulet, but it's not really worth wearing over the ox pendant that we have on. Now my plan here was to take the elevator up and to try to go for the line head chest in the middle, but I end up aggroing every mob in the room. So, instead of dealing with two rangers and a mage, which is very hard to do on Ignite Wizard, I decide to just invis out and go for the door. Now, unfortunately, this was a nightmare goblin, so it caught up to me and does almost six, pretty much 60% of my HP. So we have to immediately campfire here and hope no one pushes. Use a potion to heal up the rest. And now I do hear someone over here to my north in this room. I hear flappy feet. Looks like a pretty undergeared bard, so I kind of just do the usual. Ignite haste and visibility with the shield. Bonk, bonk, and he goes down in three hits. Melee Wizard is basically an all-in DPS check fight, so you really have to just land your hits with the staff. Every hit you miss is very bad since you swing so slowly. As long as you stay on them, though, you should be good. This guy had some treasures for us, protection pots, some more heals. But very undergeared. I'm pretty sure we also caught him with all of his buffs down, so he was the weakest he could possibly be. And yeah, now it's pretty much back to just kind of XP farming mobs to ensure we hit level 15. Gonna head to a room that has a ton of goblins and a goblin mage. And a ton of chests too. And just start clearing it out. Off the Goblin Mage, we managed to actually get a Blue Crystal Sword. I don't think I've ever gotten a Blue Crystal Sword off of the Goblin Mage before. I swear they updated the drop table to give more wizard items. Pick up some purple heavy gauntlets for some easy cash. But yeah, this is a very nice weapon for clearing mobs. It's pretty fast, the animation's nice, and we can also use Ignite on it for some extra damage. Very nice upgrade right there. Now, as I'm opening this chest, get some sellables. I hear a cleric start buffing up and walking in. Clerics are pretty tanky. So I know he's not going to go down easy. We use our ignite. And I open up with some poke damage because he's fighting a goblin. Hit him with a fireball zap. And here I could have kept kiting, but I decided to just shield and all in. And we just barely kill him. His last quarterstaff hit was about to hit me there, and we would have died. Thank god we got the early poke damage in. Before you loot any body that you kill, by the way, always make sure you immediately start healing and getting your HP bar up. You never know when a third party is going to walk in, and looting takes time, so by the time you end up finished looting, you might just be screwed. Finally get to looting. He has a vitality ring. Those sell really well. 
a no two knowledge, one all pendant, which is actually really nice for us. Decent glove upgrade. And this guy was just trying to get some AP, so we had a lot of decent treasures. And we're basically just going to try to fill up our bag to get the most value possible. I see this heavy ornate chest, and whenever you see one of these, you always want to open them. They can give you some insane rings. They're honestly one of my favorite chests in the game. Unfortunately, we get absolutely nothing, but a few good trinkets. Whenever you're in the zone, always have a health pot ticking. They recently got buffed, so they almost counteract the zone damage. Again, just going to be speeding up some more mob clear. I decided to make my way back to the main room I was in at the beginning and try to get that line head chest in the middle. I completely forget I have the blue crystal sword. This is where I realize when I'm fighting the mage. And we finally clear out all the range mobs, which can be quite challenging when you don't have magic missile and make it to the chest. This chest actually never requires a lock pick, so always try to get it. Unfortunately, no insane purples. However, I do swap out some of the junk in my inventory for the purple items, just so that we can get more value from the vendors. Now here, my plan was to kind of just clear a couple more mobs and then take the blue static portal. By this point, I'm confident I've made it to level 15. So an easy extraction with the static would be ideal. And we make our way over here, but unfortunately you'll see the rocks have fallen, which means the static is taken. And now we have to find an actual portal. And if you played goblin caves, you know this can be kind of hard. There aren't many portals, it seems, by the end of the game. By the end of the game, I always assume that I'm just going to step on a rogue. I also see a blue light here, so I pre-ignite. But it ends up just being a torch on a portal. And a dead lizard man. Yeah, you always want to be sneaking around at the end. Make as like the least amount of noise as possible, because you never know when a rogue's going to be around the corner. And we get a safe extraction. Really good run. That game gets us to level 15, which means we can finally put on our last perk. We're going to go off Staff Mastery. We're going to put on Mana Surge and Sage with the Arcane Mastery Ice Shield and go back to 10 Spell Wizard. We're done with the Staff build. Level 15 also unlocks the Marketplace, the most important thing for this whole series. From the Collector, we get a cheeky 214 gold. 88 gold from these random purples I'm not going to sell on the market. And now we become a trader for 25 gold. And we can access the marketplace, which we have a ton of items to put on. To fit all the gold that we're going to get from selling all these items, we're going to buy a ton of money purses so that we can store the gold. And with that, we have to start listing some items. We've already sold a bunch of items here, filling the entire listing. The heart candies, 145 gold per 10 is insane. Now, the way you basically want to look at how to list stuff is you search it up on the market and you can kind of just see the lowest price. And then if you want to quick sell, just put the price slightly below. And you should sell it with the cobalt ore here. I'm going to do that exact thing. 90 gold for five cobalt ore. So I list mine for 80 gold. The centaur tail, 1.2 thousand gold, absolutely massive. As you guys can see, we've sold a bunch already. We just need to sell two more items, the ring of vitality and the ox pendant, and then we can build an insane kit to try and accumulate the gold for the gold cloak. So far, we have 3.8 thousand gold, and we're going to go to the marketplace and start building the kit. 
First item we pick up is a very nice spell book with some magic damage and buff duration. A necklace of peace with three additional magic damage. Leather cap with two additional magic damage. Now ideally you want true damage, but the additional damage stuff is a little bit cheaper. Get a nice movement speed knowledge ring. A tunic with some knowledge for some health as well. Loose trousers with two knowledge for some move speed. Occultist boots are very nice. They give some move speed additional as well. Make a little sail on the ox pendant there. We go for the radiant cloak with the true magic damage. Four knowledge base, by the way, for only 150 gold. Now our kit's looking really nice. We get some heals, a campfire, and I noticed that our gloves are pretty bad. So we end up getting rid and vendoring these riveted gloves and end up buying some reinforced gloves because they give HP. And with that, we are left with nine gold left. 114 HP, 43 knowledge kit. It's looking pretty good. We have a ton of added magic damage, some decent knowledge, some good HP, which is pretty much what you want on wizard. We're on the 10 spell build. I'm also going to just remove ignite and put on chain lightning for some extra damage. It is time to put the kit to the test and see what it's capable of. We are zapping a total of 45 plus nine, 54 damage in this kit. Now from this point forward with the gear that we have, we only have one objective, and that is hunting down players with gear that we can sell on the market. We need to make about 4,100 gold, which is what a golden cape with two true magic damage costs. And to make that, we're gonna need a couple of big kills. I'm gonna be speeding up a lot of the PVE in the next two games because a lot of PVP action takes place. We do have another heavy ornate chest here. Unfortunately, we can't get it, but we do have missiles now and our damage is nice. We do also have 41% magic power, but the missiles with the added magic damage are going to absolutely destroy mobs. Nothing from the heavy ornate chest, sadly. Our crystal sword should also be doing a little more damage, which is going to be nice for clearing mobs. Now making my way over to these shelves, which have a bunch of loot on them, I do hear someone clearing and there has to be a guy here. So I end up trying to break the barrier. Can't exactly do this too quietly. I do throw a light orb in case it's a rogue with stealth. Barbarian immediately holds W with shout. And all I have to do here is dodge his Francesca's Hit him with the slow. And he folds in two fireballs and a zap. Because he had absolutely nothing. Although he does have a will ring and some jewelry we can sell, which is nice. So we will take it. Every kill, you never know what they can have. You could have picked up an insane ring that just sells for a thousand gold. Now I do end up just resting here. If you ever have a zap missing, you can always just quickly rest to get your zap back. It's probably the most important ability in the game for quick kills and consistent DPS. Again, we're gonna be farming the centipedes, but this time it's gonna be a lot faster. So I end up just resting back my magic missile. All you need to do for the centipedes on a wizard, if you have magic missile is make them walk in a straight line to you. And uh, it's very fast. I'll show you guys this one kill here. Almost get stuck on the rock there and take a hit. While it's doing its little thing on the ground, you can just quickly loot a chest. I probably should have just used a third missile on this one, but it was extremely low already, so we do end up securing the kill. We actually get a very nice pendant, two will, three magic damage. 
which can definitely sell for a bit. Now above me, I hear someone fighting a centipede, which is usually supposed to be down here. So I hit the gate and invis up to check out the situation. I see the centipede at the door and a dead body on the ground, so something had to have happened here. Quickly trying to get rid of the mobs in case we get pushed. You never want to have mobs on you, especially goblin mobs when you're fighting. Because they hit like a truck. I checked the body on the ground and we end up getting some heart candy. Which is nice. I know there's someone at the door because the centipede is literally trying to attack the guy at the door. I end up hearing a staff get pulled out as well, so I know it's a wizard or warlock or cleric. And I assume he's going to push me as I'm trying to kill the centipede. And he's trying to chuck some ice bolts at me. Casually just dodge them. And we try to make a move here with the haste and biz. Now these poison pools are doing a great job at zoning me. But I do just go all out aggressive here. Hit him with the nice direct. Hit him with the ice bolt. Finish him with the zap. Again, he didn't look too geared, but there's another kill. We take a nasty hit there from the 180 centipede headbutt, which is really bad. Like, if we get pushed here from middle, we're kind of just screwed. So I end up doing a campfire to try to get all my spells back and get full health. With that completed, it is time to check the loot of our fallen victim here. The centipede from earlier is still aggroed on us, so we have to loot kind of fast. We do have a true magic damage leather cap, some heart candies, lock picks, treasures, surgical kit, throwing knives, protection potions. All of these are very good for us and can be sold on the market. Before looting further, just gotta deal with the centipede now. We already weakened it from earlier, so it goes down quite easily. Two nice rings. Very nice rings. Any strength rings with true damage or agility rings sell for quite a bit. Unfortunately, the rest of this guy's gear was pretty bad. But I know we've made some decent cash and we should probably extract. Again, we make our way over here to the Lionhead chest that is always open. Still haven't received like a very decent purple yet from one of these. We do end up getting some trinkets. The crystal balls never sell, so I don't pick them up usually. This guy's dead body was moving. Kind of freaked me out, honestly. Just clearing some more goblins here. Get hit there, which is kind of unlucky, but we have a lot of heals now, so still no reason to be lazy in PvE. You never know when a player is going to show up. And as I'm killing this goblin here, I notice a ranger through the window. I try opening the door and he hits this crazy jump shot through the window, which kind of cooks me. And then he hits another one through my protection pot. And now I'm on the run. Those window shots are crazy. I never expect them. Luckily, we have a ton of protection pots. But this fight ends up being a journey. Hit him with the dodge, the zap, missed the slow unfortunately, and from my past experience with the ranger, I know he's trying to bait me into traps, and you'll see in front of me, there are a couple, so I have to fight him from here. Hit him with an ice bolt that makes him 1 HP, invis passes traps, 
Unfortunately, I don't see this one in the dark. He literally had a minefield of traps. Now, I'm pretty low. I know he just ate one of his ranger biscuits. So he's got to be at least a quarter of his HP plus a bit. Instead of rushing him, I decided to just reset and heal. And I'm confident with the amount of spells I've left that we can take him down. I light orb to quickly disable the traps in case we end up coming back here. And now it is just a fight to the death. Reset the protection pot. Ace for the cast speed. Invis to reposition. Now here I should have just explosioned him. Because he backed himself into a corner. Goes for the spear hit, but my ice shield creates a gap. Missed the chain. Hit that explosion. With that one. Hit that one. And now I'm basically just trying to dodge while the explosion finishes him off. And there's the fight. Honestly, pretty intense fight. Did whiff quite a bit, a few spells, but ended up taking him down in the end. Good fight to that guy. Quick campfire reset before we go loot the body, of course. You always want to make sure that you're resetting and not just loot right away. You never know. There could have been someone above us ready to jump on us. Now, this guy had some crazy stuff that is going to make us a lot of profit. The longbow, the rings were nice. The pendant was decent. The spear was also really nice. This kill right here was a couple thousand gold for sure. He also had a nice wanderer attire. Four fist power on a wanderer is really good. Two true reinforced gloves. Decent light foots. I don't even know if I end up taking them. No, we snagged the spear instead. I think I should have dropped the least turn shoe in my inventory for his light foot boots, but time is of the essence and it is the goblin caves. So it's best to not get greedy and make your escape. Notice how I'm looking at the ground here, thinking there's more traps. I was very paranoid after seeing the minefield he put down, and since our last death was literally a ranger trap. And we spot a portal. I think we did hear it from earlier when campfiring. And that's the round. A lot of PvP that fight. That ranger fight at the end was also insane. And there's the extraction. Not a whole lot from the collector, but we'll take 150 gold. And now it's basically just a matter of time before we sell all of this on the marketplace. The quickness ring sold for 320. As you can see here, I've filled my listings with a bunch of items. And yeah, I'm basically just here monitoring stuff that sells. Another ring sold for 80 gold. We can now list these lace turn shoes. And yeah, basically it's just a waiting game. I also throw in these lock picks. They're 70 each. So if you see these, pick them up. They're easy cash. The most satisfying thing is when stuff sells and you can just hit that collect button. Now we've already made 1600 gold. We have all these items listed and we've bought a bunch of meds for our next match. And while those items are listed, we're just going to go play another game to make some more gold, get some more items and hopefully achieve the golden cape. We get the spawn beside the magical shelves. Now this game actually gets very hectic the longer it goes on. If you thought the last game was action packed, this one is quite interesting. We get the spawn by the elevators again, which means we can route to the centipedes to try and make some bank. Super speedy centipede kill with the missiles into the crystal sword. Unfortunately, we get absolute junk, and that's just how it is sometimes with the centipede. I do hear goblins dying above me, so I decide to grab the protection potion, anticipating there's going to be some PvP action. Do you hear someone above for sure? So I prop pot, pull the lever, 
paste and we see a cleric in front of us. Should just be fireballing here. I don't know why I'm not. And then a fighter with sprint out of nowhere. Hitting us with the third party. Barely make it out. He hits his crossbow after the falchion swings. Stick him with an explode. With every zap. He goes flying with the fireball. He's made too much distance and the cleric's behind me, so I decided to just disengage the fight. I want to get back in there as soon as possible because that fighter seemed like he had some decent gear. So we end up doing a campfire behind the pillar. Luckily, no mobs are in this room, so it's pretty free. Full spells. And now we're just ready to get back in there. Always pre-protection pot before these fights. I see the cleric down at the end of the room. I thought maybe the fighter might have killed him. Hit him with that slow for that guaranteed explosion. Get the double stick on him. Actually, wait, I whiffed the second one. Hit him with the zap. He goes into a corner so the fireball's free. And there he goes. Now we heal right away to reset. I hear a potion below me. I assume it's the fighter, but a ranger out of nowhere comes up the elevator. And I see both of them kind of charging. The fighter comes in. I don't think they're teaming. Fighter whiffs the crossbow. And here I'm just like, you know what? Maybe they'll just duke it out. Let's get another reset going. I end up immediately resting for some zaps and ice bolts. And I stay close to the door in case they push me. I'll reset, drink a pot to top myself up on the HP. Of course, we're going to prop pot before we go in. And I notice him holding the door. I invis through. I don't see the ranger anymore, so I assume he killed him. He ends up playing the pillar really well, but I catch a slow. Hit him with a nice fireball. He charges me after zapping, so I do end up going for the missiles to finish him off. And this guy had some stuff. This guy really had some stuff. This was a fat kill. Decent profit. Those trousers were nice. They had move speed on them. He had some decent rings on. A ring in his inventory. Protection pots. Very, very crucial kill for the series here. Interesting battle. This is always the go-to PvP zone on the Goblin Caves, and it's very fun to fight here. End up picking some decent cash from the Lionhead chest too. This was the Ranger's body, and he didn't really have anything. Finally get around to looting the Cleric. He also really didn't have anything. Those rawhides actually could have probably sold. They had two will on them. But I do not end up taking anything else. I remember that I'm going to need campfires, so I go back to the cleric's body. Usually clerics always hold a campfire. And so I just snag one off his body real quick. Usually it's a good idea to always hold two on you. Now there was a centipede left, so I end up do clearing it real quick. And we end up getting a nice bear pendant. It's like decent. You can definitely sell for a little bit. Any purple jewelry you get is usually pretty good. The Torque of Soul, however we got, is pretty worthless. No one buys that. And we're pretty full at this point already. We could comfortably extract here and make a decent profit. Make my way over to the mining room part after clearing some more mobs. There is a Lionhead chest spawn in that room. The one I'm heading to. Which is why I usually like to go buy it. This is also not a bad room for PvP as well. Just missile any range mobs. I do end up taking a hit there. Yeah. 
And here's the line edge chest. It does require a lockpick, but we do have them, luckily. You don't even need to break the wood. You can just reach the chest. Get a cape, but unfortunately it's just one strength, so it's absolutely terrible. Now we do have the static right here, but I hear clanking. And there is another player in this game where we are. I hit a quick rest to sneak in some zap charges. Now it's either a fighter or a cleric. And this would be the perfect room to stay in since we do have the static extraction. You'll notice he throws the torch to check if the static's been taken, which means he probably has some loot. Now this guy just gets absolutely obliterated. I, I really don't know what to say. It's a really hard matchup. The only way to really beat a wizard is to hit him with those holy strikes. But we hit him with the fireball zap double explosion stick zap. No one is going to survive that. Get some purple loose trousers. Again, very easy cash. And that was about it. We can't really fit much in our bag, so it's really just end up waiting for the static here so that we can get out. And it finally opens. Another very hectic game. We survived. But with that in our inventory, we should have the amount of cash we need to buy the golden cloak. Another 338 gold from the collector. I end up listing these move speed trousers for 620, and I think I definitely listed those for a little too low. As you notice that they instant sell, that's always a sign that you kind of maybe should have put them higher, but 620 gold just like that, I'll take it. With this final sale of 350 on the Ring of Courage, we have 4.3 thousand gold, which is now enough to pick up a golden cloak with true magic damage. The golden cloak has a three all attribute base roll, which is absolutely insane. And the cloak we end up buying is worth 4,000 gold. It has two true magic damage with some magic penetration. Of course, the three all attribute base roll, some armor, some magical damage reduction. And there is our very first piece of gold in the series with 400 gold remaining and a bunch of items still listed. I go ahead and list the old cloak. And there we go, guys. The first piece of gold gear. That is where we're going to end this episode. I'll see you guys in episode three. Until next time, take it easy.